Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I had a great question about how to allow your player to load a scene by name and just by typing it into a text box and hitting a button. So I put together a little sample and we're going to run through the steps required to make this actually work. So the first thing you see is we just have a demo scene with the canvas and I made a panel. The panel has a horizontal layout group. That's just to keep these two components next to each other. And then I just shrunk the panel down. So if you look at the panel, let's scroll out you can see we've just got a nice little panel here the layout group keeps the buttons close or the button close to the text box um, under here we've got an input field it's just a standard input field you just go right click on a panel go to UI and choose input field and you'll get the same thing one change I did make though is I expanded it out and I replaced the placeholder text with the words scene name just so that it's a little bit more obvious what that text box is for then we have a button, and again, all I changed on here was the text to say load instead of button. And we also added a script. So there's a single script involved called load scene button. Here I just created a new script, and let's take a look at it and see how it works. So, oh, let's get rid of this. We don't need that there. No errors. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have an input field with the serialized field attribute so that it shows up in the editor and can stay private. This is the reference to our text box. Let's take a quick look one more time. So on the load button, here you see we have the input field. If I click it, the input field selected is this one right here. So there's only one input field. Pretty easy not to mess it up. But it's important to make sure that it's actually assigned. If it's not assigned, this isn't going to work. Then in the start method, we get the button component. And we want to add a listener to the on click event. So we could do something similar in the inspector. So I could go into the inspector, expand out the button, hit plus add in an event here that's maybe tied into this script itself or something else. But I, in this case, since it's simple and I don't need designers editing it, modifying it, or doing anything like that, it's all kind of code based and it's relatively straightforward how it's going to work. I prefer to do it just in code. So here we're just calling onClick.addListener, which is how you register another event there. And you could have other ones registered in the inspector too. This will just be another one in addition. But we're adding the try load scene method. Now the try load scene method is, it could really just get away with something as simple as load scene and then passing in the input text. But I wanted to do a little bit of validation here so we don't get an error. So first thing we do is just drop the scene name into a string. Uh, again, we could just use it from there, but I prefer to drop it into a, a named string. And then we check to see if the scene exists. And if it does, we call scene manager .load scene, and we pass in the scene name. Uh, the scene exists method, I just grabbed a quick example off Stack Overflow. I, I mean, I'll post a link in the description, but it's really simple. We just loop through the different, uh, or we loop through from one to the count of build settings, and then we add in the names of the scenes by and strip out the extension, and then we just check to see if the name matches that. Unfortunately, there's not an easy way to just look and see if the scene is valid. And now, we need to do this because if we go back to the editor, and when we build and play, if we don't have these scenes in our build settings, so I have a box and a sphere scene, if we don't have these in here, we're going to get an error. So this just won't work. So in fact, let's remove the sphere one. And I'm going to hit play. I'm going to show how this works, and then um, we'll jump back to the code one more time. So if I load up the box scene, hit load, you see it just loads right in. Now if I start over and maybe I try to load that sphere scene, nothing happens. And again, that's because the scene isn't in there. Now let's see what happens without that check. So if we don't have this check and we just try to load the scene, what we're gonna end up with is a nice little error. And I just like to avoid the error. So here we go, sphere, hit load, and you see, oh, Sphere couldn't be loaded because it's not added to the build settings. Now, it may be good to just have that error message there, but it depends on your setup and if this is going out to actual people. You don't really want to be spamming the error log, but in development, maybe you do. So let's jump back over one more time. I don't think there's much else to talk about here other than the load scene method also has a couple of options. So you can load things as additive, which would just make it load the scene on top of the existing one. Or we could also use a load scene async to make this an asynchronous load. So let's let's do that. Let's change it over to a load scene async and we'll push in additive mode. We'll hit play one more time and then watch what happens. So now I hit play. Oh, actually I want to re-add my sphere scene. So 
let's stop real quick go to back to build settings and then go to the project view I drop the sphere back in there that scene so we can load that one too hit play and now I should be able to load multiple scenes so I hit box hit load box scene loaded now nah, just type in sphere hit load and the sphere scene loaded now I can't really see the sphere over the box because the uh, the positions there but I could just move this sphere over a little bit and you can see it's there too we also have a bunch of cameras not a super clean solution for this we'd want to clean all this up and stick with one good camera but the main functionality of using a text box reading the value and loading everything should just kind of work so I hope this is helpful um, I'd like to do a couple more videos on unity UI stuff in the near future so if you're interested in that just let me know and um, if you like the video, of course, don't forget to share it with your friends, hit the like button, hit subscribe, come join us on the Facebook group or at the site at unity3d.college. And uh, thanks for watching.